Say hi, Mike. Huh? Say hi. Hello. We're putting a Maryland kitchen faucet in for our laundry sink. I uh, got a nice little laundry room with a quartz countertop. Jam set up here. Uh, we'll have a faucet soap dispenser going here. Uh, Moen kitchen, I mean, it's a Moen kitchen faucet that I'm just going to use for here because I like the high arc on it. Moen's the best for kitchen faucets in my opinion. I love Moen kitchen faucets. They're very easy to install and they look great and they work great and blah, 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 blah. And they're a good price. So they're just the best in my, in my opinion for kitchen faucets. Do you want to show them the one in the kitchen? Yeah, you can look at the one in the it's kitchen. It's the same one, right? No, nah, it's a different style, but it's still uh, a Moen. It's a Moen, right. So that's the one in the kitchen faucet. Uh, it's on right now because we we drain the water down. Yeah, tell everybody about that. So in order to drain the, we got to put valves underneath it. It's on the first floor. So in order to drain the water down, you turn it off, and then you open your faucet. You got to open it upstairs too to let air flow and let it all drain down. It's like holding your finger on a straw, putting it in a soda, and then pulling your finger out. Well, your finger is still gonna um, hold the soda in there for the most part. Not all the, you know, little bit's gonna drip out over time but you need airflow up top to drain the whole house down. This is gonna be a slow drip on you when you're trying to install the valve underneath. So you open everything up, let everything drain real nice all the way down, hose bibs, whatever, and then you can install your valve so you don't have to play that game as much. But, all right, here's the mowing kitchen faucet. Obviously you want the mowing signal to the front of you, that means it's the front of the faucet. This is a like a plastic washer they give you. If you have an uneven surface or something like that, that's not like a smooth surface like this, you might need to throw a little bit of caulk underneath it as well. But I like to try to stay away from the caulk or the putty as much as possible. Uh, put it so the groove is up because it's gonna snap into the faucet. So if you see it goes in there real nice like that. You see the groove pops right in there. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see as much underneath when I'm working there, but what you're gonna do is this washer or whatever you want to call it, you put that up first, <clears throat> and then you take this metal ring here. This is all the Moen's faucets, at least the single hole ones, and then you tighten that ring up to that, and that's your that's how it secures. That's how that. it secures underneath. But the other thing that I like about Moen. So eventually, we're going to put this hose through here and you tie it in underneath. So we'll put that through there. We're going to put, we're going to snap this weight around it right where the yellow sticker is. Makes it real easy to show you where it is. You take this, you open it up and you snap it around it. That way your head snaps back in every time you pull it out. But another thing I like about Moen is they give you this. So after you put this washer on, this nut on, it's tight up. You take this and you put it around your hose and all you do is thread it on the bottom. So this metal surface rubs against that, the hose rubs against that sharp metal surface. You know, I wouldn't say it's sharp, but it's enough to do damage over time. That's why you put this plastic piece on there, which only threads on a little bit. And now you're rubbing against plastic instead of, you know, it protects the hose over time from, you know, fraying and stuff like that. So that's one thing I like about modern kitchen faucets. They always give you that to kind of protect the hose. And then also they give you a tool to tighten that, tighten that nut on. So this is the tool. You get the nut started or whatever, you get it somewhat tight. And then this tool goes on here and that's, and that's how you tighten it. it makes it real easy. And even to get more leverage, once you get it as tight as possible with your hands, you do something like that. You put an awl through or a skinny screwdriver, and then you tighten it and you have more leverage, like a T-handle, to tighten it really tight. So, uh, we'll do that. Swap this bed to downtown. Make sure washer's real nice and aligned. You know, you're not too worried about anything with it being straight yet. You just want to get it started. Sometimes on the faucet, if you want, if you're doing it by yourself, I'll hold the supply lines down tight and then you get it started. Else it's going to be all floppy on you by yourself. So you don't obviously want to yank on the supply lines too much, but you want to do it enough to keep the faucet moving and grooving on you. 
Slide that washer up. There you go. So we're just getting this nut on here. You want the faucet centered in the uh, the hole so the washer protects all around it. Is the faucet straight, Rich? No, like the actual faucet? Yeah, straight into the handle so it's right perfectly right in the, 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 you know. Yeah. All right, so if you want to check this out, this is, you get your oil in there and you tighten it real nice. You'll have to reset the tool. Yeah, baby, that's nice and tight. So now we're gonna hop up here, nice and straight. Now we're gonna get our um, hose. We're gonna put it through, but here's the deal. You don't have a head on this bad boy. So don't go putting it through, you're gonna lose it in there. So what I'll do is I take the head, I just slightly attach it just a little bit, just so I don't lose it, because when we fire this faucet up, we're gonna blow it out without the head on it. So I'm just kind of putting it on there a little bit now so it doesn't go through the hose and I'm trying to jam it back through and get it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna get our protector piece and we're gonna get our weight. Here's the weight, you click it open like that, you take that stupid thing out and you got these two cushions that could cushion that supply hose. All right, we're gonna come down here. Oh. Oh. This is plumber's yoga. We're gonna grab our hose, make sure the thread part is looking up. So you can thread it onto that stem, that like stem piece. Do that. And then we got this yellow marking, which I kind of like to put it a hair um, down past the yellow marking, but who cares? As long as you put on the yellow mark, you're good. And then here, we're just gonna underneath here. And then on this on these small ones, you got the click in. So this hose that connects to the faucet is this mowing click in. All you gotta do is center align it pop it in. If you want to take it out, you press this black button and pull it out. But make sure you, you get a nice click and it's nice and in there. So that's good. And honestly, that's all it takes to install a mowing kitchen faucet. Now we just got to hook the supply lines up to the valves we're going to put in. So let me grab a container. Catch some water. We got that. We got our half inch crimp rings. Let me grab the valves. We got two half inch pro press, I mean half inch um, crimp valves. We're gonna get rid of angle. This is coming out the wall, it's not coming out the floor, so we want an angle one. We get rid of the this uh, nut and furrow, we don't need, <clears throat> need that. Open up the other one. Junk. We're gonna get our PEX cutters. And like I've said in previous videos, these copper crimp rings are a lot better than them cheesy stainless steel ones that go on. I like the copper crimp rings. We get our nice easy handle, one hand um, crimper. Come on underneath here. Usually for your valves, you want like three inches to the center of the center of the opening off. So you measure from here to the edge, it's minus a half. I'm just gonna eyeball it because it's my house, I don't really care. Whoever installed this cabinet sucks. Let it drain into your container. So I'm gonna turn the valve off. Put my crimp ring on. That's why I don't have to sit here all night to wait for it to drain. Make sure the valve is nice and tight, get it started. Boom. That's the cold. Now we shall do the hot. We're gonna put the crimp ring over it real quick. I just don't feel like waiting for the drain. Make sure the valve's on, like all the way on the piece of pipe. Crimp it on. And bam, you're good. I'm gonna grab my small adjustables. Now the supply lines, they will come with a sticker on it that says hot or cold. So this is the hot one. We'll hook it up to the hot line. Sometimes it'll have a sticker on it that says hot. Sometimes 
like it'll be red or blue underneath here or something like that. It, it labels which one's hot, which one's cold. So we're gonna make sure our hose, we don't tangle our lines up. Flip that up into the corner. Get it started. Get it nice and snug with your adjustables. You don't have to kill the thing, you just want it nice and snug. It's a washer that keeps it tight. Get your cold line. Same deal, get it a hand tight as much as possible. And that's that. And we'll continue to do the drain and then we'll start up the faucet. All right, we got the soap dispenser that's gonna go in. They give you a little gasket. I don't trust this thing. I always throw a little bit of silicone down before, but all it is is that gasket. You screw this thing up. It's hard to get this really tight. You kind of just get it as tight as possible. This part will start spinning on you and you can't hold back that well. So we'll get our 100% silicone. Just be careful with this. It, uh, it doesn't clean up real easy. Put it around your hole. Just a little bit. Put this bad jammer down. For the most part, you just get this thing hand tight. If you want, I'll show you the pair of uh, a basin wrench that I use. So this is a rigid, extendable basin wrench. So all you're gonna do is get underneath there, open this up and turn it like that. So just get it up in there, make sure your handle is so you can spin it. You get it on there. You gotta hold back on the actual piece, but that's how that's all you do. I'm not tightening it anymore because all it is is a soap dispenser. So this is the soap container that goes underneath of it. I'll take this piece out. We're just gonna thread this up into that piece. So underneath here, we'll just thread it up in it. So that's in there. You fill up your well. Let's wipe away the silicone real quick. Gently wipe it away. So now you never have to take that container back off. You just take your soap bottle and pour it down there. And then you take this bam mamma jamma with the point looking down. So soap on the run. You just put this in there, just like that. The soap's in there, we don't have it in there now. You just give it a couple clicks and it primes itself and you're good to go on the soap. All right, we're here. We're gonna start installing the drain real quick. We got our stop putty. I guess it's stay put. Stay put, whatever. Um, we have our sink, our uh, sink strainer. I like these deep sink strainers. They, um, it's for a kitchen sink, just like that. It's a lot better uh, the way it tightens up. If you have the depth that you can do it. If not, you gotta get with the skinnier ones, and I don't like the way they snug up as well. Now we got our putty. Just put it on just like so. No need to roll it up into a freaking into a snake or anything like that. It's the stupidest stuff ever. Just kind of put some on. All right, so we just kind of get it going. Don't have to be perfect. You put it in the dead center of your drain. Give it a little pushy poo. Get it from moving. Now we got our fiber wash. It's gonna go cup, or it's gonna go black washer, fiber washer, cup, lock and nut. So if you come under here, you shred this cup up just like that. Get this bad man and jam started. Get it as sn snug as possible. And start tightening the bad boy. Sometimes you gotta hold back on the actual strainer. On these ones, you really don't have to because the way it lo locks up into it. Let's go up here, make sure it's centered. And it is not centered, so we will loosen a little bit, pull it to the center, and then retighten it. Looks close enough. Take our point again. The putty will continue oozing out for a little bit. You just have to get it a couple times. Put your leftover putty back in. We'll come down here. I do need my sawzall with the sawzall blade. Cut our tailpiece. So in order, to, since there's no garbage fence here, we have a flat inch and a half tailpiece that goes right to the bottom. Um, I like to put the, you gotta put the washer on 
and then the nut and it tightens up to the thingamajig, the strainer. So what we'll do is we'll do this, we'll tight, we'll keep it somewhat snug. We also have to glue our piece in. Two-step process, glue and cleaner. Be careful on these finishes with your primer. Primer doesn't come off white, okay? So don't get it on the white. Make sure your distance from the wall back, you have plenty of room to stub out a piece that you want. If not, you gotta cut a piece flush with the cabinet or something like that, depending on how far back your your, your sink is and everything like that. Oh, I never primed it in there, huh? All right, so we'll just mop this piece up real quick just to get our height for the tailpiece. So, you know, put it in, um, get your height. Oh, we are close, my friend. Cut your tailpiece to height. Uh, this one doesn't require a washer, but this back one, either get a nut with a washer built into it, or you have to get a nut and a washer, and then this top one requires a washer. Beveled end down of the washer. You might not make this, I hope you make this. Tighten that, tighten this, tighten that. Make sure your trap looks nice and straight. This is the most important nut on here. Get that nice and snugged up first, I like to. And then you can go to your other two. So make sure our handle is off. Our handle is off, we'll turn our valves on. Come back up here. Like I said, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect this sprayer beforehand. Blow it out, turn it off, and then reconnect. They give you a spot for your adjustables on here. You don't really need to. Usually it stays pretty tight enough. We'll give it a little snuggy poo. Just be careful, make sure on the spot where your adjustables actually go. And then turn it on. Test your spray options. The best way to test a kitchen sink or a laundry sink is to fill it up and then let it drain. So we'll do that a couple times. And that, my friends, is how to install a laundry sink faucet with a mowing, mowing kitchen faucet and the drain assembly. Well, we got a leaker, Mike? No. <laughs> we ain't got no leaker. Oh, you it, better... It's not considered a leaker if you never tighten the nut. If uh, you tighten the nut and it leaks, it's a well, leaker. Well, show everybody where you forgot to tighten the nut, because someone's going to call you out on it otherwise. The nut that goes to the strainer. I forgot to tighten that. I only hands, you know, I only gave it a little, just to get our height measurement, but right. I never tightened it. But it's not considered a leak. It's not considered a leak <laughs> unless you tighten the nut. Or <laughs> like if you solder a joint and it leaks, that's a leak. But if you put a joint together and you forget to solder it and then you turn the water on and it leaks, that's not a leak. Because you never tried to solder it. Whatever you say, plumber man.